Hi guys, welcome to Kenganda. My name is Janita Maya. On today's episode, we have a lovely guest all the way from Tanzania. Hello. Hello, Mambo. Hi. <laughs> Sawa. <laughs> is, it, is it Habari? Habari, Habari Zako. Yeah, Salama. Ah, yeah. Salama. Zima. Yeah. Okay. Yes. We want to learn other news. Now, could you please introduce yourself to our viewers? Yes. Well, thank you first. First, I want to thank the Kanganza team for having me on your platform. My name is Ashley. I have a channel here on YouTube called Ashley in Africa, where I talk about moving, living, and doing business on the continent. I left the U.S. when uh, things were going crazy in the world in 2020 to rebuild my life and my business here um, on the continent of Africa. I'm currently in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania building a coffee business here with my two young girls and yeah every day is a is a new day it's a journey yeah, so i'm yeah. grateful to be here with you thank you for having me yeah you're welcome thank you welcome to the motherland we should have some drums for you in the background <laughs> i did see your youtube channel and i can see that you're well-traveled foreigner because most times when foreigners come onto the continent they have one African country that they love. And you've been to all these African countries. What, what do you do when you go to all these African countries? What is your motivation to go there? Well, I don't know that I've been to that many. I mean, I've been to Tanzania, where I am now, South Africa, and Ethiopia. And mm -hmm. so, um, I mean, I've always wanted to travel the continent. I just never really thought that I would be doing it at this age um, in my life. And to be able to be on the continent and move around, I just felt like, why not? You know, when I first, when I made my visit to Ethiopia, it was a short visit. When I started the coffee business, I wanted to understand the way that um, Africans on the continent consume coffee. And so I knew Ethiopia had a huge history with coffee. So that was the best place to go for, for that. And then South Africa, it was just, I had to see it. I knew that they lived a life that was most similar to the life mm -hmm. of, you know, most people in the U.S. And um, I just had to experience it. Plus, I was like missing a couple of the luxuries that mm -hmm. I didn't have or that I hadn't been exposed to in Tanzania. So mm -hmm. I needed to do some shopping and, you know, it was a discovery trip. It was an opportunity for me to take a trip to a country that I always wanted to go to. Oh, that's nice. And then the other part of your business um, about, about helping people relocate to the continent. Oh, absolutely. That's the other one that is really just a passion of mine. I got so much inspiration from channels like Kanganda, um, and search for Uhuru, um, African Superstar, Wodemaya, um, African Tigress, like just people sharing what Africa looked like and, you know, how accessible it was for people that wanted to move um, and relocate and do business on the continent. So I started a consultant business through this channel, Ashley in Africa. I help families uh, move themselves to the continent and also entrepreneurs that want to expand their business to the continent. Mm -hmm. Oh, Thank you okay. for helping that's me. Lo business, so. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's lovely. Um, I saw a video that you did and you made a powerful, powerful statement. You said, I don't feel black in Africa. I just feel human. Can you please expound on that? Yeah, that was actually my first video um, when I wanted to launch this channel. And there are a lot of things that you learn when coming to the continent as an African-American. And where we are from, everything is so racially divided. We're constantly told that we're minor, we're under, we are less than, you know, a certain population. And it goes back to our history of how we came to that continent. And so to come to Africa and to see everybody be black, um, it was just, it was a different experience. My daughter went from being bullied in school because of her complexion 
um, picked on to coming here and being popular because of her complexion and her accent. And it was one of the moments that I think many diasporans feel when they come to the continent, they no longer have to carry that cloak of what it means to be black. Um, they no longer have to wonder if somebody is looking at them crazy, you're gonna treat them differently because they're black. I mean, there are different things that come with being a foreigner here on the continent, but being able to shed the weight of what it feels like to be black in America is a beautiful thing. And it's something that I feel every willing African-American mm -hmm. diasporan should be able to experience once in their life. Okay, lovely. Um, uh, that, uh, um, so in hindsight, you've not experienced racism in Africa. I don't, I mean, I've, I've had some experiences, but I wouldn't consider it racism. I think it's more of mm, maybe classism. And honestly, mm. if I'm being honest, there is a privilege that you come mm -hmm. to this continent with as an African-American. Because number one, your, your dollar, the US dollar mm -hmm. is, is what it is right now. And mm -hmm. there is a level of privilege that we come with. So we have to recognize that and be humble in that. Mm -hmm. But no, if I'm thinking about it, racism, I, had, I have not experienced on the continent. I'm not saying that it doesn't exist but i haven't experienced it mm, okay um that's that also works um i saw you're big about spirituality i saw some videos about being spiritual and have about how you can heal and whatnot and something uh caught my attention you talk you said african americans should heal before traveling to africa can you could you please explain that yeah uh, so like i mentioned there is an, a, tr a tremendous weight that is on many African Americans living in Amer living in America, constantly, every day, we're scrolling through our our social media feeds and we're seeing children being mistreated by police. We're seeing blacks mm -hmm. being you know hurt and taken out by police. We're seeing each other mm -hmm. taken out by each other. We're seeing and having a lot of these conversations where we're being mistreated and we harbor a lot of that because we still have to operate in it. And so we mm -hmm. really don't talk about it or release it or recognize what it is. We've just accepted it. And so when we travel to this continent, we are looking for that safe space. But one thing I had to learn was the safe space is really within. It's not going to come from any external place. But also, it's not likely that you will do that healing in the same mm -hmm. place that will con is continuing to abuse you, which mm -hmm. for many diasporans, it's the Western cultures that we live in. So I, I believe that it is necessary to get out of those environments, to do the work, but then to recognize that everything that you need is within you. And so you have to be willing to find that from within and not expect mm -hmm. that from Africans when you get to this continent. Like they are not here to soothe you and make you feel comfortable. Um, mm -hmm. And they also don't need you to save them, right? So like getting over this concept that mm -hmm. we are coming from a superior place and we're coming to do good. Like there's a lot of learning and receiving that we can get from the African people on this continent, but we have to recognize like all that has happened and heal mm -hmm. from that, however that looks. Oh, wow, that's that's a new point of view that I hadn't come across. I didn't think of it. I don't think anyone on the team actually thought of it too. Yeah, um, can you tell <laughs> us about the dating scene in Africa as a, as a single parent? Yes, I can. <laughs> so <laughs> this is we've been in we've been on the continent since 2020. So I have spent extensive time here in Dar es Salaam and then also in South Africa, Johannesburg mm -hmm. specifically. Um, two totally different dating experiences. I think in Dar es Salaam, 
I go out less because I live in a suburb of Dar and I, I, I may have gone on a few dates. Like the, the, the dating life here is a little different. Men get married very young. Um, and the older the man is nine times out of 10, he's already married with the family. It's not going to stop him from trying to have conversation and exchange phone numbers, but Mm -hmm. you know, that just has to be, that's just not what I'm doing. Um, Mm -hmm. And so I didn't necessarily find the best dating experience from a lifestyle Mm -hmm. perspective here in Dar, which is why I also chose to like set up shop for my business in South Africa, South Africa, Mm -hmm great dating experience. Um, Many men, you know, are divorced and that's a little bit more of a Western culture. So I can date a man who has children, who's been married before, who has learned from his mistakes and is willing to do something different. Um, Mm. It's wealth is open to a woman that has children and also is a woman who's professional um, and has certain career aspirations. Mm. So I've had a great experience in South Africa. Yes, I enjoyed it. Mm. Oh, okay, lovely. Uh, would you say your quality of life has um, changed, you know, from your life in the US and then life on the continent? My quality of life is actually better, I feel. Um, and And it's in different ways, like just the cost of living is less expensive here on the continent. And I do like a certain quality of life. So, you know, I didn't necessarily have to downgrade my life coming to the continent, but there were certain things that I was willing to just release and let go of. Like, you know, just huge wardrobes of clothes and shoes is just Mm -hmm. something that I wanted to do. I wanted to live more of a minimalistic lifestyle and Mm -hmm. that's helped in so many ways. Um, I feel like there's a lot of luxuries that I have here that I couldn't afford in the U.S., like having in-home house help, um, somebody to help me clean and cook and watch for my children, um, being able to receive fresh fruit and vegetables and like fish to my house every week. That's a luxury that, you know, is very expensive. Most people cannot afford in the U.S., so my quality of life has increased. I feel less stress. I don't have to hear sirens. I don't have to hear, you know, violence, the mm. the armored material violence and the, mm. you know, the things that are happening and even really nice neighborhoods in the U.S. So I'm at a, a level of ease in my life where I take it slow and I'm immersed in nature. That's That's what life is looking like for me now yeah that's 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 nice um can you give us your top two challenges ever since you relocated as an african-american in africa tanzania top two Mm, one just the language i mean i know i know a little bit of swahili like enough to get by Mm. but as a foreigner you just can't you know expect to like be able to communicate with just that little bit of knowledge. So that's the biggest thing is the language and I'm constantly Mm -hmm. learning. And with that, having to negotiate and get better pricing because I'm perceived Mm -hmm. as somebody that has more and as a foreigner, Mm -hmm. you're going to get charged. And some of that I recognize is just the cost of doing business or the cost of being here. Um, Mm -hmm. But making sure that I work through that um, is is a thing too, because you know I've been in a position where somebody was constantly overcharging me for months, and it totally ruined our relationship, our working relationship, and mm-hmm. you know so working through that and not wanting to ruin relationships over money and being overcharged is is probably one of the top challenges that I have. Mm-hmm. okay so learn the okay. language and learn how much yeah. things cost oh okay it's a, i wanted to ask for your advice but i think that's perfect advice learn the language and learn how much things cost and then you can be able to mm-hmm. move about it okay ashley tell people where they can find you 
yeah so you can find me here on youtube at ashley in africa subscribe to my channel leave me a comment let me know that you came over after watching me here on kanganda i would love that i'm also on instagram at ashley in africa and links to work with me connect with me book a call with me are all in my bio on instagram and also um on my bio and description page in youtube yeah that that is lovely thank you so much ashley thank you and now uh, guys thank you so much for watching please like this video subscribe to our channel subscribe to her channel and follow us on all our social media pages we'll see you guys next time